All right, so yesterday I released a new package to NPM called Nest Remix. So in this video, I wanna talk about why I built it, how to use it, and what I'm really excited about in the future. So first of all, I wanna talk about Nest.js and why I like it so much. It's really good at building service layers. It gives you a really great dependency injection model. It makes it really easy to build out your classes and uh, just create a really good hierarchy of your data services. It's really good at API routing. So you actually get all of your decorators like you would see in C Sharp or in Spring. And it makes it really easy to parse out your requests before it ever gets to your actual business logic code or your database code. And I really like that paradigm for API routing. And we'll talk about why I don't like it so much for web page routing. It has an opinionated architecture and has opinionated patterns. It's not super strongly opinionated. It doesn't, it doesn't force you to use any particular technologies. But what it does do is similar to Angular, it kind of encourages you to do certain modular patterns and use certain class types in certain ways. And I think that is really, really critical when you're talking about building big platforms to make sure everybody is on the same page as far as what classes to use and how. So I think that's really beneficial. Uh, the community is very big, so you have a lot of pluggable modules for your database layer. You can use Prisma or TypeORM. I really like Prisma. There's various auth mechanisms you can install, so you have really good support for Passport. And just in general, kind of any typical thing you need in an application, you can npm install nest slash whatever you want, and you have a really great pluggable architecture to get that technology inside of your application very quickly, and I think that's huge. Flip side, the web page templating or rendering is, is pretty bad, right? Like we have handlebars and it takes a lot of effort to actually get it going. It's not the best templating language in the world, given today's standards of using JSX and some of these other tools that we see now. Uh, and then just actually getting templating working when you're deployed is a bit of a struggle because you have to include that directory of templates inside of your assets. You need to ship that up correctly. Uh, and it's just kind of a pain. And, and then lastly, I talked about how much I love the API routing. It's not great for web pages because now you have your controller layer and then you have your API layer. And let's say you have a view of cats. Do you return the index template rendered at cats slash? Do you return it in a different controller called cats views? I really don't like that kind of approach when you're talking about APIs versus view controllers. So I don't love using Nest.js for that. But on the flip side, we have Remix. Uh, so Remix is really great at server-side and client-side template rendering. So you can write JSX or React or however you want to kind of phrase it and actually render that on the server-side and ship it to your client. Our Remix is very powerful and really allows for client-side hydration and kind of on-the-fly updates. File-based routing and nested routing that Remix gives you is also great because I think having a particular file that maps directly to the URL is great for web pages. Uh, it also has a lot of great tools for user interactions and user interactivity. So they have a form element that we'll kind of see if, you, if you're not familiar with Remix, we'll do a quick demo of that. Uh, it makes it really easy to build out your interactions with your users inside of your web pages, none of which you would get from Nest because Nest is really meant to be a backend framework. But the big problem with Remix for me is there's really no support for your backend work. So like, let's say you take in a post request you have to do the work to check that request for its method type, see if it's a post or a put or a delete. You need to do all the data transformation from your request body to your actual typed object. You need to do all your validation on your own inside of each of your methods. And you can abstract that kind of stuff. But to me, having Nest.js as an API routing layer that does all of that work through attribute driven uh, methodologies, I think it makes it a lot easier to maintain that kind of code. By merging these two things together, we now get all of the power of Remix to do our server-side templating and our web page routing, along with the great things that Nest gives us as far as the, the backend tooling and backend support. That's why I built it. That's why I'm really excited about it. And I think they play really well together. Remix gives you the opportunity to use a custom server, and they already give you one for Express. So really what I did is I took that I translated that into Nest.js, which is essentially expressed under the hood, and I added some niceties to make it really easy to get up and started with Remix. So uh, we're gonna dive into a demo. All right, so I'm gonna start with a brand new Nest application. So we'll just do Nest new my app. And while that's installing, I'm gonna show you just a quick walkthrough of how to install it. So one command, I love it, Nest has Angular schematics as part of their CLI. So I was able to set this up to really, this is all you need to run. We're gonna install Nest Remix, all the Nest dependencies and all the React dependencies and all the Remix dependencies that we need. 
Uh, there's a couple of dev dependencies that I use just to make it a little easier as far as the build process. And then there's some options uh, that you can opt in or opt out to. We need to make some changes to the TS config to support both Nest, which uses experiential decorators, or Remix, which uses JSX. So this is a known working configuration. You're welcome to take it or just decline and, and get it working on your own. Uh, we add some NPM scripts to run both Nest and Remix build processes. And then we update the app.module to use Remix module. And we'll talk about that when we get there. So we have our apps. Let's cd to my app and Nest, add Nest Remix. All right, so we do an override. Yeah, we'll override update package JSON and update app module. Okay, so our packages are installed. So let's all open VS Code, which I'm sure we are all using. So first things, we'll just jump straight into the package.json. So it's essentially the same thing you see out of the box from Nest, but I've changed start dev to concurrently run start dev Nest and start dev Remix. So that is essentially the same thing you would typically see in Nest of just start watch. Uh, I do have a nest.json TS config that I'm using specifically for Nest. And then the TS config is actually remixes. I can't override the name of TS config yet, the remix CLI, so I let it take the default. So we have start dev nest, start dev remix, build nest, build remix. So let's run start dev. It's gonna concurrently run both the remix and the nest builds. So since our server is nest, our URL is well close 3000 by default. And the first route we hit is hello world. So where's that coming from? If you've built enough Nest apps, you know by heart that app controller returns get hello, which hits the app service, which returns the string of hello world. So that's our Nest route. But inside of this source directory, we actually have a routes folder now. So we have this hello world component in route, which we know from Remix will be at hello hyphen world. So, so now we're using both, right? The first one hits nest, it'll actually fall back to using a remix. And if we look at our routing table down here, we see we have remix controller mapped at wildcard all. So what's gonna happen here is nest is going to try to serve the request first, but if it can't, it's gonna fall back and let remix do the work. Couldn't find hello world in any nest controllers. So it hit our wildcard, found the route in remix and served it. If you look at hello world.tsx, this is all expected. We have a, a typical default export for our component. Uh, we have the remix form tag here with a post and we have a remix form tag with a put. So as a quick demo, post. So you see post, we see brackets post and delete and I'll show that in a minute and put. And then we have put here. So that's the behavior, but if we scroll up, we see something a little bit different than you would typically see in Remix. You'd have your loader function where you do all your work uh, to load the view on the first time, and then you have your action function to manage any of these puts, posts, deletes, et cetera. But instead of actually doing the work, we're just calling this wire action function coming out of Nest Remix. So what does that do? In that first parameter, we see hello world backend, the, the class symbol being passed. What's happening here is that as part of this Remix controller doing its work, it's going to look at app module and it's going to look at the type that you gave it and pull that service layer out of Nest. So hello world is actually a service that's injected into Nest. So if we look at mod app module providers, hello world backend. If we take a look here, we see at loader, we see at action and we see at put. So at loader is pretty obvious. You know, that's our loader function, right? We are able to use all of the decorators for routing you would typically use in an SJS API, and we can actually use them in part of our Remix backend routing. So we can use query parameters, we can use body parameters, you can use the at param and actually use the Remix parameters, not the NestJS ones. And then I also have a custom Remix args. So let's say you need to pull something out of the request or the context or whatever, you still have access to that and it's injected through Remix args. I don't prevent you from accessing that. But it do give you all the niceties of the pipes and the decorators that you typically use in Remix. We talked about post comma put, or post comma delete and then put. So if we take a look at this action, we have action dot put. And here inside of our form, we have method put. 
So one thing I didn't like about Remix is that I had to do all of the checking against the request object to see what method type it is and all that kind of stuff. You know, it's, a, it's meant to be front end focused. It's not meant to be a back end tool, I understand, but this is what I want. So with action.put, I'm actually able to route for every particular method type, we're going to send it to the function that I want to send it to the same way I would route an S API request. We have this specific method for put, and then as a fallback for any other method type, it's gonna fall back and hit this method because we just said action. So if you wanted to, you could change this to action.delete, action.post, patch, etc. So now you can actually fully route your CRUD operations through your Remix backend in a really succinct way. It's a way that I really like. And then I mentioned in app module, we have next to Hello World backend in the same dependency module, we have app service. So you can actually uh, inject, what am I doing? Constructor, private, read only, app service. You can inject this and treat this like you would any other Nest.js service. So let's say this is a database service. You could do all of your database calls you typically would otherwise inside of your hello world. I'm gonna be lazy and keep with the concatenation instead of interpolation. So just as a quick example to show that injection actually truly does work. Set message fallback is gonna include that message from hello world. So, hello world, it works, yay. The main things here are you now have routing based upon your request method. We now have request parsing using the decorators that Nest gives us along with all the pipes. And then along with that, we have all the nice tools from re And then along with that, we have all the nice tools around Nest.js to use for our backend. So how does this all work? So to kind of bring it all together, if we go to app.module, you'll see that we replace the at module decorator with at remix module, which is essentially the same thing. But if you look at the typing, you'll see that I actually unioned module metadata with this remix config. And remix config is essentially just the public directory and the browser build directory. And these are things that remix needs for the build process and for the serving process. And you can actually change public and build. So I made sure to make these open so you can customize these if you change those settings. Underneath the hood here, that's where I do a lot of this work. So you'll see in the routing table, there is a remix controller here. So I set this up at the very end of the Nest.js controller lifecycle. So the last controller to try to serve is a remix controller. At the wildcard route, if it didn't find anything in the Nest.js table, it's gonna let remix run the custom express server that remix team actually gives you, and it's gonna serve it through your remix routing. So that's also where I hook up all the wiring to be able to use your backends through these wire loader and wire action functions. So the only real caveat here is that if you have your backend service, it needs to be exposed to the root module, whether that's through exports or whether that's just through the hierarchy that you're using. Otherwise, it's not gonna be able to find that dependency. In general, that just means you need to add your backend as an export and everything should be working as expected. Now that we kind of talked about how it works, I wanna dive into what I'm really excited to work on next. So here's why I'm excited. This gives us an opportunity to ship full stack experiences in a way that I think makes a lot of sense. So with Nest.js, like I said, it's really easy to just import entire subsects of backend tooling. And now with Remix in the front end, we have the opportunity to really easily deliver components for the front end. So we're gonna kind of imagine a little bit here, but let's say we have an auth framework and we'll just call it uh, my auth. And we're gonna import that directly into here. So now with my auth.forroot, we're bringing in all auth services you might need, all auth endpoints you might need. And so now we can have imagine just by importing that we have API slash auth slash login slash register, forgot password, et cetera. And then over here in our routes, we can now do auth slash login.tsx, export default, uh, what do we call this thing? We just called it my auth, very clever. So export default my auth login view. And now we can deliver a JSX component that knows what API routes to hit and automatically wire all that up. And there's obviously a lot of ways to provide customizability, customizability, custom. There's a lot, there's a lot of easy ways to add custom functionality inside of these components or inside of these APIs. So I don't want to dive into like all these details, but just kind of showing the, what we can do here. We can do the same thing here, register view. Forgot password. So 
Very quickly, we now have a full stack experience between the front end, the back end, the service layer, and we can have certain expectations or certain customized options inside of our for root that kind of describe your user or your database or anything like that. So to be clear, you can already do this in Remix or Next, like we see Remix Auth or Next.js Auth, where they just export the services straight from the package. But I really think Nest.js's dependency module system where you can just import the external libraries in your application in one spot and kind of control the configuration and the way it works directly through the dependency injection. That's one strength that I think Nest.js really brings to the table when we're talking about building these backend sides of our Remix or Next.js applications. So that's why I really like pulling that together. That's what makes me really excited. I know I'm kind of just making things up and kind of imagining here, so hopefully it makes a little bit of sense, but that's where my head's at. And by combining these two technologies, I think we now have all of the power that Remix gives you on the front end side of the stack along with all the things that I really love about Nest.js and the back end of the stack. And we brought it both together. It's currently in alpha. If you want to give it a shot, you can find us on GitHub. If you search Nest Remix, you'll find us, or you go to beermoneydev slash next hyphen remix. So let me know what you think. Let me know if this made sense. Let me know if you're excited too. And I will see you soon.